everybody welcome back to q-tips we are the video star junkies and we are back once again to bring you a few selections to watch over the weekend on streaming and we're going to get right into this and i'm going to shoot this over to bill why thank you so my theme this week is found footage who doesn't love found footage Ooh. yeah um hollywood loves found footage because it's cheap and no better example of that than the one that arguably kicked off the whole found footage thing, 1998's The Last Broadcast. This film was made on a budget of $900. Edited on a desktop computer using Adobe Premiere, or Premiere 4.2. Um, $600 was allocated for production, while $240 was utilized for digital video stock and 20 hours of tape for $12 each. Holy crap, this is I, this is a budget so embarrassing, I would work on it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's just amazing. They uh, So what's it about? It's, it's uh, basically a bunch of uh, some folks go off into the woods to look for the Jersey Devil, the cryptozoological creature that is by far the most unlikely one to be real. Like, bar none. <laughs> You know, just just make something up and and put it on on YouTube, and it's more likely to exist than the Jersey Devil. Just want to throw that out there. There's no bigger waste of time I can imagine than walking through the Pine Barrens looking for the Jersey Devil. Find a man-made lake and start. You know, put a put a submarine in there looking for a plesiosaur. Better chance of finding it than finding the Jersey Devil. All right, just but anyway. As, as a cryptozoology fan, it just like Jersey Devil just absolutely boggles my mind. Um, anyway, so a, a bunch of guys go out there looking for it, and only one comes back, who's promptly thrown into jail because uh, he must have killed the others. One body's never found. And um, they find some footage that's really kind of messed up. And throughout the film, this one woman is trying to um, digitally make you know make sense out of it get the static away kind of like if you were a kid and cinemax was on or whatever and just try to you know try to get the boobies uh, to show up and uh so that's going on and then they in meanwhile they're they're kind of going back and forth about stuff and there's a twist at the end that i saw coming but you know you might not um now that i've told you there's a twist you'll definitely see it coming <laughs> is it good yeah, for for six hundred dollars, it's great. I mean, wow! And but for nine hundred, um, not so. Great. Well, for oh, you're right. It was nine hundred. <laughs> well, gosh, ah, uh, yeah, that extra three hundred kind of takes it out. No, this is fine. This is they um they the the two guys who made this who also star in it um oh, let me get their names here because they deserve some credit here. Stefan Avalos and Lance Weiler. Uh, they, they did a good thing. They, they made a movie for no money, and they really jump-started this whole thing. Now, they were not the first found footage film. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, I think they do deserve some credit. Um, you know, and, and it's certainly taken off from there. Uh, this, is, this is... Anyone can make a found footage movie. The challenge is coming up with a good reason why... You know, an excuse for why we're walking around taking videos while stuff happens... And, uh, you know, what you what you can do in there and, you know, work within the limitations. Uh, Sometimes you can even do a big budget like Cloverfield, or you can do it for $900 like the last broadcast. It is being shown on um, Shudder. Yes, Shudder, as, as are many things. And uh, it does have its place, definitely has its place in horror <laughs> film history. So um, give it a shot. And I send this off to Zach. Oh, thank you, Bill. Um, it sounds like uh, you're fucking out and I'm fucking in, which is appropriate because uh, that is the name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that joke will make sense <laughs> to no one who hasn't watched my uh, my first recommendation because that is the name of the uh, autobiography of the, uh, the, the starring character of my first recommendation, which is uh, a show that I think a lot of people have uh, kind of missed. I, I don't know. It's one of those shows that I, I think it got some buzz when it was on TV, but, uh, you know, it, it just doesn't seem to quite have the uh, the legacy that uh, that certain other shows of the same time period have. So, and that might actually have to do with uh, the star 
uh, of the show. <laughs> He's a bit of an acquired taste. Uh, I'm, of course, talking about Danny McBride as Mr. Kenny Powers in Eastbound and Down. It's a four-season <laughs> show. <laughs> Renee knows what I'm talking about. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a four-season show about a, uh, a, a, a pro baseball player who uh, once had a uh, pretty pretty hot pitching arm uh, who has kind of fallen on hot times because his arm is not as hot as it used to be. So he has to move back in with his brother and his uh, and his wife and their family in South Carolina and get a job as a, a substitute teacher. So, uh, like I said, Danny McBride, I mean, I'm, I'm sure if you don't know who I'm talking about, uh, you've seen him in something. Uh, he's been in a ton of stuff, but uh, I kind of love him in this role. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of like... I, I kind of love him regardless. I know that uh, he's kind of grating on some people, but I think he was basically made for this role. He is a... Mm-hmm. Uh, he is a thing. Yeah, Renee knows what I... Obviously, mm-hmm. Renee has seen this, and he, she knows what I'm talking about. Um, he's basically a... Uh, you know, he like I said, he was hot for a minute, and he's not anymore, but he's still full of himself. Uh, for example, <laughs> the, it, the name of his autobiography, which is uh, 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 You're Fucking Out and I'm Fucking In... Uh, it, it, he, he actually spends the first few episodes listening to his own autobiography on tape, which is narrated by himself. So that kind of shows you how self-absorbed he is. Uh, but it's a great show. It's really stupid. It's lots of fun. Uh, it's got a lot of like great supporting characters. It's got John Hawks as his brother, who I think is actually like one of the most underrated actors, uh, just like, uh, I don't know, of the last couple decades. Um, I love him. It's also got Steve Little, uh, Jennifer Irwin, Andy Daly, a bunch of bunch of uh, uh, other actors that uh, you might recognize, even if you don't rec- uh, recognize their names. Um, but it's lots of fun. It's very stupid. Uh, highly recommend it. And of course, uh, this is also a couple episodes uh, of this show were th- this is a collaboration. David D- Gordon Green directed a couple episodes, and uh, of course, David Gordon Green and Danny McRide would go on to. Collaborate on what I think I think uh, we all everyone on this podcast agrees the uh, the best uh, run of <laughs> Halloween films. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> but please <sighs> don't don't hold that against them. This is actually pretty good. Uh, it's also it's also I should mention it's it's co created by uh, Jody Hill, who's done uh, a bunch of like a, 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 a he's also done a bunch of other like kind of like awkward comedy stuff. Um, he made uh, uh, or he wrote the Foot Fist Way and Observe and Report. So yeah, just lots of lots of great comedy here. Uh, once again, the name of the show is Eastbound and Down. It's four seasons, and uh, you can catch that on HBO Max or Max or whatever the hell they are calling it uh, when uh, this 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 episode airs. Um, and speaking of uh, people with uh, with with uh, hot arms that have fallen on, I don't I don't know where I'm going with this. So I'm just going to pass it over to Paul um, because it would be awkward if I had an intro where I mentioned hot arms and then I passed it to Renee. Yeah, Yeah, this isn't awkward at all. Oh, no. No, You could have said speaking of people who wrote Halloween, but that's... um, Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, people who have... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) Well... Well, my, my, my theme this week, this week, as we all know, as and by the time this comes out, it'll be released, is 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 the premiere of of Fast 10 or Fast X, the 10th Fast and the Furious film, not including Hobbs and Shaw, which is a spinoff film. So I know everyone's <laughs> excited about that, right? And, um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. everyone's excited. And Unironically. And of course, it's, it's all about family. <laughs> and so therefore, my films are all about family. So my first film is from 1984. It's Suburbia by Penelope Spheris. It's playing on Roku, Vudu, Tubi, Pluto, um, Shout TV, Plex, and Freevee. So this is Suburbia from 1984, but it's not It's not um, Richard Linkletter's one from 1996. This is Penelope Spheris' one. She is, you'd be familiar with her. She directed, actually, well, she's directed a mm-hmm. bunch of things, but most notably, she's noted for the Decline of Western Civilization documentaries. Uh-huh. Yeah, about punk great and soundtrack. Metal. Yeah, yeah. She she also directed she also directed the Beverly Hillbillies movie and the Little Rascals too. Um, so <laughs> this film is a film about a, a group of punks uh, that teenage punks that uh, basically form their own family and they squat in a derelict suburban house. And it's very similar to it's. It's definitely kind of a melodrama. It, it's kind of reminiscent of the Outsiders, in that you have this 
this this group of teenage rebels that are rejected by society, so they form their own little family. Uh, it's it's actually really good. Most of the people in it weren't even like uh, actors. Most of them were punks. Uh, Flea's in it. Um, he's one of the characters in it as well. Uh, from Red Hot Chili Peppers, and uh, there's they have some actual punk bands that they go to when they go to some clubs, and uh, it, it definitely is a melodrama though. This ain't necessarily going to be a happy film. Going to head, heads up on that one, but it's really worth watching. It it's a catches a, a subculture at a time because uh, that was something Penelope Sears was excellent at. This is so I highly recommend this. This is Suburbia, 1984. And uh, it's also labeled as Re- Rebel Rebel Streets and the Wild Side, but I've never seen it as that. I've always thought it's Suburbia. So Suburbia, 1984. And speaking of suburban punks, I'll pass this to Renee. Well, thank you. My first recommendation is a foreign psychological horror film. Uh, and it's the story of this, this family. They're just kind of going through this tumultuous time right now the relationships are strained and it's it's so it's kind of a it's a little dark it's a little maybe a little unnerving uh but this movie is called good night mommy <laughs> yeah it's a nice it's a, oh and I've, i should have mentioned this is my ode to mother's day uh always it's timely. a family film too it is yeah. a family film yeah so this is my um uh-uh. always timely holiday suggestions um, yeah, so these twin boys, um, their their mom came home and she had had some surgery done and they just think she's just acting really weird. They're just trying to kind of figure out like what is going on with her. Their father has uh, left the picture. It seems that they have separated. So it's just kind of a really awkward, strained time in the family. Um, yeah, so uh, I, this is my recommendation. It's Good Night, Mommy. Um, don't look anything up before you see it. Um, oh. <laughs> you should watch it on uh, Tubi and Pluto. Now, I will tell you, uh, this is a uh, German film, I believe. And so you do have to read the subtitles. There there was a remake done in, I, I believe, 2022 with Naomi Watts. Um, it is... I want to say it's the same but different. It's very much, I'd say, watered down for American oh, yeah. audiences. Yeah. It's a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter. Lighter? And, you know, like, a, yeah, it's lighter. So, yeah. oh, God. Oh, so much editing. Anyway, so that is my <laughs> recommendation. It is called Goodnight Mommy. It is available on Pluto and Tubi and Redbox and Voodoo. And, uh... Yeah, I'll pass this back over to Bill. Yeah. Hey, I want to just say something in defense of this character you're mentioning who, like, listens to his own autobiography. I am of the habit of listening to, like, our podcast and just zipping through to the parts where I'm talking. <laughs> Throw that Sounds out right. there. I, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's ever been a, a long trip I've taken that I haven't listened to our blob uh, <laughs> line in. That's, just, why, that's why that has over a thousand views. Oh yeah, yeah. At least nice seven hundred of them are mine. I do a lot of traveling. Nice. I just I look for the parts where I'm talking and Renee is laughing. And <laughs> I, I, I just need to edit the rest of y'all out. Um, it's okay, funny, so because I, I will sometimes listen to it when I'm editing, and I was just telling Zach this the other day that I'll just I don't because I just get distracted super easy, and I realize that I'm just sitting there listening to the episode and not actually doing any edi- editing. And it's like, oh, this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But, okay, so this next one is a movie that I swear we must have done, but I couldn't find it anywhere on our list. So, um, doing found footage, and if you're talking about found footage, you really got to go to the one that started it all and and then was promptly forgotten for another 19 years or so before they decide, hey, this is a great plan, and I'm talking about one of the most important, influential, and indefensible films that has ever been made. <laughs> 1980s. Paul is already chuckling because he I, knows where I, I'm I going. I knew you were going there. It's my ringtone, oh, by it. the way. Oh, oh, really? 1980s Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, stop, yeah, yeah. Start stop. start writing the letters now. Yay. Um Yes, yes, it is, yeah, I, yes, I know about the turtle, trust me. Um, listen, I'm not going to say that everyone has to see this movie, but if you are a student of horror cinema, 
you have to see this movie. Now, thank goodness they have actually a version out there that is called the cruelty-free version <laughs> that has cut out all the real-life animal slaughter and has just left in the hopefully pretend human slaughter. That's okay. the cruelty-free version. Yeah, there you go. Although this movie is surrounded in legend, including the legends that some of the scenes that are supposed to be fake are not actually fake. Like they were just, who do you know, walking through the Amazon filming stuff and they came upon a woman impaled on a stake. Instead <laughs> of getting the hell on the airplane and flying for anywhere else, they said, we can incorporate this into the movie. But that's totally not true. They actually went on trial because they heard that this was true. Um, yeah, so this movie is uh, Riguro Di Diodato, uh, directed and wrote the, or at least had something to do with uh, writing it, I think. And it's about a bunch of uh, American filmmakers who go down South America to video, you know, to film cannibals, and then they disappear. And years later, uh, an anthropologist is sent down there looking for them and has all kinds of wacky adventures, and then finds a cannibal tribe that have the lost reels of film and the bodies of these people that are long since just decayed into horror movie. That's the first half of the movie. Second half of the movie is they're playing what they developed, which is blotchy and it's missing chunks and all kinds of things. And you find out that these people who went down there were horrible. They were awful. They were rapist, murdering scumbags who richly deserved what they get. And we watched them get it good and hard. It stars um, Robert Kerman, also known as R. Bola, who was a porn actor. He was one of these poor saps who, uh, you know, goes to, goes to New York learns his craft, starves, and then it's like, hey, I'll pay you $500 to be in a porn film. He's like, huh, what the hell? And no one will ever see this. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> He's probably most famous for the guy who actually did Debbie in Debbie Does Dallas. And then he spent <laughs> the rest of his career complaining about it. Dude, take the W. Jeez Louise. <laughs> I would have bought him a drink. But, uh, you know, he was a real actor, but he's most famous for that. And for this movie, which he actually hated more than the porno films. And, yeah, um, a lot of animals are needlessly killed in this film. And you get to see it up close and personal. You know what the inside of a big turtle looks like? No, you will after you watch this one. And it's pretty horrible. It, like, doesn't make any sense at all, like, from, a, from a, an anatomical point of view. It just seems like a lot of blood and guts and stuff that they just shoved into a turtle. Jesus. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty bad. But man, this film is brilliant. It is so subversive. Paul jokes that he's got it as his uh, ringtone. That's because the music is actually wonderful, gentle. I really do lyrical. have it as my ringtone. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Of course you do. It's a great tune. And, and that's what, you know, do, 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 do. And then here comes Cannibal Holocaust. And you're like, what the hell? Why is this cheery music over this travelogue footage? Just setting you up for the gut punch that the rest of this movie will be. It's brilliant. It's awful. They probably should have been strung up by their tibias, you know, after making this. But, uh, yeah. Cannibal Holocaust. It's on Shudder in several versions. They all come with warnings and trigger warnings. It's like, here, trigger warning. If you have a soul, this movie will make you feel bad about yourself for having watched it. And yet, and yet, I really do feel like it is essential viewing for those who are, you know, horror fans, students of cinema. Um, now, if you decide, no, that's okay. I understand. I have never watched a Serbian film. I understand it's really well made. And uh, the subject matter, I could not enjoy it. I can't enjoy it. I'm not judging those who do, you weirdos. But, you know, it's just, I, I yeah, no matter how well it's made, sometimes there's some subject matters that just uh, don't do it for you. And, you know, it's good to know that ahead of time. Sallow, The 120 Days of Sodom, you know, brilliantly made film by a brilliant filmmaker. Don't need to see it. Just, that's your decision. It's a good film. But, that one I've seen. No, it is. It is. It's a good film. I've seen bits of it. And it, it's really well made. And it has a message. And um, But, yeah, I wouldn't watch it again. And if we if it gets beamed into outer space and aliens see it, they're going to nuke us from orbit. <laughs> and, and we would have nothing to say about it. We would not have shit to say about their judgment. Ah, yeah. bum bum. If you've seen yep. it, you know. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anywho, that's Cannibal Holocaust on Shudder. Uh, I think there's also uh, the 
um, oh gosh, Joe Bob Briggs has a version. And that, that, that leavens the misery somewhat in having his amusing stuff in between. And Darcy, the male girl and everything. So uh, there you are. Pick your poison. Don't send me any letters. Yes, I love turtles too, but you know. I wasn't there, okay? Yeah. Cannibal Holocaust, Unshutter. And I send this off to uh, Zach, who hopefully has a uh, cheerier film to bring us up. What oh, should totally let me down on that? Oh, oh, awkward. <laughs> I've got just the ticket. Um, so, Bill, <laughs> yeah. uh, you're in the woods. Okay. You, uh, you've you been traveling for a couple days with your party. It's night. Uh, you're on watch. Everyone else is asleep. And you hear a sound in the woods. What do you do? I'll reevaluate all the choices I've made in my life that have gotten me to this position. <laughs> well, <laughs> obviously, uh, Bill will be a, uh, a horrible... <laughs> <laughs> a horrible role-playing uh, gamer. Uh, however, uh, you don't have to be a role-playing gamer to enjoy my next recommendation, even though it is based on uh, probably the most famous role-playing game of all time. And this is actually hot off the presses, folks, because I just read today, apparently this is going to be streaming, uh, well, tomorrow when we record this. So on, on Friday, we'll have just come on Paramount+. Plus. But I'm, of course, talking about uh, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Now, let oh, just, yeah. Let me just stop anyone oh, wow. who, uh, you know, I say Dungeons and Dragons and you just like you turn off, uh, you, you throw your iPhone down and smash it uh, because that's nerd shit. You don't want to watch that. No, uh, this is actually a, <laughs> a really good interpretation of uh, Dungeons and Dragons because it's got a lot of references to the game. It's got a lot of in jokes. It's got a lot of stuff that uh us uh or, i'm sorry us i mean uh you gamer nerds out there will enjoy <laughs> uh, but <laughs> more importantly uh, it's actually a movie that you can watch and enjoy and have fun if you have never played if you have no familiarity with dungeons and dragons if you're not a fan of even like fantasy stuff it's just a a uh, a fun a fun movie it threads the needle uh, very very well it's basically i mean let's just be honest i i i 100 guarantee that the pitch uh, that the the writers went in and and gave was basically uh, uh, fantasy guardians of the galaxy, which is basically what it is, and that's fine because it's actually a very fun movie. Uh, this one, for those of you who are not familiar, it's uh, stars uh, teen heartthrob Chris Pine as uh, he's a bit of a a bit of a rogue, and uh, he he teams up with a couple of other uh, unlikely heroes, including uh, speaking of uh, Fast and Furious, Michelle Rodriguez herself. Um, yep. And also uh, Hugh Grant, uh, who is actually really delightful mm. in this. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I don't want to. I mean, the, the name is pretty much in the in, or the name of the movie is pretty much gives away kind of what it's about. Uh, but it's about uh, adventuring, stealing magical artifacts, fighting wizards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But once again, if none of that sounds uh, interesting to you, I think you might actually still enjoy this movie because it's got it's got heart. It's got some. Uh, good jokes that are actually funny, which is not entirely common in today's films. And uh, it's just all around a, uh, a fun movie. So I highly recommend it. Uh, also, I should mention lots of really cool uh, practical effects. In fact, uh, one of the d directors who uh, I didn't realize that he, he wrote and directed this <laughs> until, until it was coming out. Uh, but uh, John Francis Daly, who I'm a fan of uh, back when he was a uh, cute little kid in Freaks and Geeks, um, yeah, but uh, he he he's posted a bunch of stuff where like they do a bunch of uh, uh, practical effects, a bunch of costumes, a bunch of uh, really cool trick shots in this movie that look like they were done with like CGI compositions. And no, they weren't. They were done with like moving walls and stuff like that. So uh, really kind of cool. Kind of brings it back to uh, practical filmmaking. Uh, so uh, Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves is going to be on Paramount Plus when this airs. Uh, check it out. It's a fun movie. It's actually pretty family friendly, unlike Bill's recommendation. So you can probably watch this uh, <laughs> with with the kids, assuming the kids are you know over thirteen. And uh, yeah, uh, so that's my recommendation. Oh, I should also mention if you what you got to go on Paramount Plus if you go looking for a Dungeons and Dragons movie. There, there is a there is a, a previous Dungeons and Dragons film from I think the year two thousand. Uh, I, I definitely can, cannot recommend that movie, uh, despite the fact that it actually has a stellar cast. It is a uh, horrible movie. But um, so yeah, uh, speaking of uh, uh, speaking of nerds who probably sit around casting magic missile all day, I will pass it over to Paul. Why? Thank you, Zach. And and 
technically he's not a rogue; he's a bard. So uh, as somebody who no, plays no, no. bards, you know. well, well, technically, <laughs> technically he's not even uh, Paul. Technically, he's not even a bard because a bard uses music to cast spells. Oh, that's true. And, that's true. Uh, he, he, do, does, he does not actually yeah. do that in this film. So you know, that's um, true. That that yeah. is true. So um, um, yeah, I want to. I will it, excuse it's... myself. Uh, by the way, I should mention my uh, my significant other may be listening to this, and I'm pretty sure this is the end of our relationship. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, you had a good run. Anyways. Yeah, it was good. It's fine. I want to second it because I it, it, it was it was a blast. I really like that one. Well, let, let me get on to mine because mine is speaking of of you know Fast and the Furious and family. My this, my second film is it deals with a family. So here we have a a, a, a businessman. He's a he's a family. He's a small businessman. He's a you know head of a family. You know he's got he his business. He's got his 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 older son. Well, I think it's the older son. Who may be a little bit de- developmentally disabled. Another one of his sons is a disabled vet um, from from Vietnam with a little bit of PTSD issues, and he's just trying to make a living, just trying, you know, make, with his small business. But you know, they're always out to get the small businessman. They always get the small businessman in the end, and there's just just people like getting in his way. And he's just trying to start this small little catering business. Why, yes, it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 from 1986 <laughs> mm. by Toby Hooper. This yeah. one is an absolute freaking hoot. Um, so Texas Chainsaw Massacre, gritty, dark, not as bloody as one would think, right? But it was it's it's definitely a, a you know a genre defining, you know, a classic. Toby Hooper in 1986, they were like, oh, you should make a sequel. And he, he wrote a sequel called Beyond the Valley of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And they, he ended up not making that one to be made this one, which is really a parody. I mean, even if you look at the poster, the poster is famously a parody of the poster for The Breakfast Club. Uh, it stars Dennis Hopper as like the uncle of one of the kids killed in the first movie. Jim Sydow plays the father of the of the, the crazy clan. And he is he is a hilarious in this he played the father in the original and he plays the father in this and he is just really funny bill mosley plays chop top his son who's the vietnam vet carolyn williams plays uh stretch the um the the radio dj who they kind of go up against it is just so much fun over the top gory but very funny eminently quotable a friend of mine in college uh Kathy butler used to constantly vote quote bill mosley's character um, which can be a little disturbing at times, but you know, that was, you know, uh, you know, I think one of her favorite things was to say, lick my plate, you dog dick. But yeah, it's a, it's a great <laughs> film, really fun, really gory, but just, but uh, it's, it's, it's an absolute blast. So I highly recommend it. Oh, what the hell is it playing on? Well, it's a good question, Paul. It's, it's, it's on HBO max at, or as Zach said, I think on the 23rd, it be, just becomes max, which is like, what, what the hell? Um, you know, which is, I think just would confuse people with Cinemax. But anyway, it's HBO. It's on HBO Max. It's Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1986. And speaking of chainsaw wielding lunatics, I'll pass this to Renee. Hey, how did you know what I was doing this weekend? <laughs> Anyhow, so I have another lighthearted motherhood movie for everyone again. So this young couple they move into a house they just have this baby and things you know things are going pretty well um dealing with you know the typical uh you know zero sleep that kind of thing so you know sometimes that gets in your head a little bit um but luckily this uh this woman's mother sent her a book and it's it was pretty cool it was like this really old book in hebrew and there was a song in this book and they her husband managed to kind of figure out the melody so that she could sing this book or i'm sorry so she could sing this song to her baby and it worked out really nicely um the baby just responded to it very well and um yeah <laughs> so, oh nothing at all happens after that it's all nothing very bad wonderful all. yeah and peaceful and it just tells you the lovely story about um, motherhood and and sisterhood and demons. So mm. that's this yeah. is my recommendation. I should go. tell you what it's called. Yeah, it's called Lullaby, and um, apparently it's it's uh, w- one of the sites that I looked at had gave it a hundred percent rating, and the other one gave it thirty two percent. So this may be a little polarizing. I don't know. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but there is one scene in particular that just tickled me uh, very much. Um, anyways, this movie is called Lullaby. And you can watch that on Shutter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I think that's uh, I think that's all we have. Does uh, Does anyone, Paul, have anything to sing us out with? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I I had actually set up I had set up a a, a, a practice of song because you know I did a Suburbia which dealt with punk, so I had practiced a Black Flag song that I was going to sing. Oh, but mm-hmm. then you know Bill Bill suggested. Oh, and by the way, Lullabies on Hulu. So I had practiced black a uh, black flag song to sing, but since Bill suggested Cannibal Holocaust, I'm just gonna do you know my best to hum it uh, because mm-hmm. it is an absolutely beautiful theme. So it, goes, it is da 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 da. Oh, that was terrible. Da 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 da. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I asked the sharpest tool in the shed weekend of May 19th, Bill recommended The Last Broadcast, available on Shudder, and Cannibal Holocaust, available on Shudder, Screenbox, Canopy, and Fandor. Paul recommended Suburbia, available on Tubi, Fandor, Pluto, and the Roku channel, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, available on HBO Max. I recommended Goodnight Mommy, available on Voodoo, Tubi, Redbox, and Pluto and Lullaby, available on Hulu. Zachary recommended Eastbound and Down, available on HBO Max, and Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, available. I still remember, Bill, when we went and saw it at at the Carolina Theater, and you and I looked, turned to each other, and I was like, not the Serbian film, but a a, a, um, a (laughs) cannibal holocaust. And and we turned to each other like, wow, I don't remember this film being that rapey. (laughs) It it is exceedingly rapey. Yeah, it's like, My my favorite... my favorite part of that film thing was because um, they first they showed I think Suspiria or Suspiria, yeah, right, and that's awesome to watch on. You know, it's awesome to watch. Period. And then uh, the guy came out and said, "Okay, well, that was great. Yeah, yeah." So, hey, how many people here have never seen Cannibal Holocaust? And a bunch of people raised their hand. And then the rest of the audience gave out the meanest chuckle I have ever heard <laughs> oh, in my no. life. It was it was so cruel and and just <laughs> like yikes. Well you and I, I were two of those people, people chuckling, should've... Bill. Well yeah, yeah, of course we were. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not proud of it, but yeah, absolutely. And if those people should have just gotten up and run. Because they were they were warned. They were warned, but okay. Yeah, that was that was uh that was something. I remember walking out afterwards and just seeing the stunned looks on people's faces. Yeah, it was great. They were just, like, in shock. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, well. Well, next time they can be the ones chuckling cruelly. (laughs) 